Hello, Dr. J here. Today I'm going to talk about the geometric series. I'm going to review the geometric series by deriving some formulas that you encounter when you hit the application of finite impulse response filters or digital signal processing in general. One of the first formulas, the geometric series that you'll encounter, is the infinite series formula where we sum uh, beta raised to the kth power going from zero to infinity, and we have a closed form solution of one divided by one over beta. Now we have a constraint here that the absolute value of beta is less than one. We're going to prove this formula by using long division, one divided by one minus beta can be rewritten as uh, long division shown here. So here we have 1 and we have 1 minus beta here. So our first term is just going to be 1. That leads to a quantity of 1 minus beta with a minus sign in front. When you finish that subtraction that leads to a beta. So in the quotient we're going to add a beta term. When we multiply the beta term by 1 minus beta that leads us to a quantity of beta minus beta squared and when we finish the subtraction again that leads to a beta squared and then we're going to add in the quotient a beta squared term multiply beta squared with 1 minus beta and we have quantity of beta squared minus beta cube and we finish the subtraction here we have a beta cube and you can see the pattern here where we add beta cube here in the quotient and we see that this long division formula leads to this uh, summation of terms where this closed form formula of 1 over 1 minus beta gives you the summation all, of all the beta k terms going from 0 to infinity. And also this constraint is uh, absolute value of beta is less than 1 in order for this to work. We'll see how this closed form solution for this infinite summation can be used to generate another formula of a finite summation going from 0 to m where m is a constant and this is where you encounter when you hit FIR filters. But before we do the derivation of the finite formula or finite summation formula, let's do a numerical example with this one. So here's a numerical example of applying this formula. In this example we use beta equal to 0.8 which satisfies the constraint of being less than 1. So the infinite summation results in a value using this closed form formula of being equal to 5. Since I'm not going to add numbers from 0 to 0 0.8, I'm just going to go up to 15 and use Mathematics some software to help me generate what the result of this is. So you can see here's the general formula of uh, this, what this summation term is expressed where we have 0.8 raised to the 0 power which is 1 add it with 0 0.8 raised to the first power or just 0.8 etc all the way up to 15 and we'll see what the result is when you do this uh, you could see here's the resulting powers for the 16 terms listed here and that gives us a final result of 4.8593 so you could see that this finite finite I'm sorry summation is approaching this value 5 as we add more and more terms so this hopefully give you a gut feel that this formula does work now we're gonna take this infinite sum closed form solution as well the summation term and find a formula for a finite sequence given as follows where we want to sum from 0 to m minus 1 and we want to know what that closed form formula is and we need to use this one to show you how we can derive a formula for the finite sequence so here we have this infinite sum formula rewritten here so I had more terms so you can see where things cancel so 1 over 1 minus beta is a whole bunch of these terms all the way to infinity. We're going to take now this equation here or the equation here and multiply both sides by beta raised to the m power and also note that beta satisfies the constraint 
must satisfy the constraint that it's less than 1. The absolute value of beta is less than 1. So we multiply both sides of this equation by beta m. So when you multiply beta m times 1, that simply leaves beta raised to the m power for the first term. Multiplying the second term here, beta raised to the first power, then multiplying it by beta raised to the m power leads to beta raised to the m plus 1 power. And then finally the third term here, beta squared, becomes now beta raised to the m plus 2 power. So all terms higher than m will see that cancels out if we subtract from this 1 over minus beta with beta m uh, divided by 1 minus beta. So when we do the subtracting of this, when we notice also that it's a common denominator, so that's equal to 1 minus beta raised to the m power divided by 1 minus beta. But when you subtract, uh, where we have all these sum terms here, we see a lot of things cancel. Where all the m, where you have beta raised to the m power and higher, all cancels out, leaving this set of terms here, which is basically the summation of going from k equals 0 to m minus 1. So now we have a closed form formula for this finite sum described as 1 minus beta raised to the nth power divided by 1 minus beta. Now we're going to do a numerical example of applying the finite sum for formula going from 0 to m minus 1. For this example, we'll use again beta equal to 0.8, and we're going to sum from 0 to 6. Applying the closed form formula, we have a result of 3.951424. Now doing it by longhand, we get a result that is exactly the same thing as this, except I only used uh, four significant figures due to the software I used. And then what we have is 3.9414, but if I went with more significant figures, we would get the exact same result. So this formula, this finite sum formula going from uh, 0 to m minus 1, where we add up all the terms of b raised to the kth power, validates this and verifies the formula does work. Because I'm running out of time on this video, I'll complete the derivation of another finite sum sequence going from n1 to n2 on the next video. Then I'll apply it with an application of finite impulse response filters. Until then, signing off is Dr. J.